Hi everyone, welcome to To Health and Holiness, episode two, hosted by Father Carol. So it does seem a little bit early to have a bonus episode for you all, given that it's only the second episode, but we are taking a break from our scheduled episodes to bring you a special episode with a drink especially created by Dylan for the anniversary of JP2's birthday. So we hope you enjoy it. Dear friends, thank you for joining us. And today uh, we are celebrating not a feast day, but a birthday. Actually, it's a hundred anniversary of birth of St. John Paul II, who was born on May 18th in 1920 in Wadowice in Poland. And uh, I'm sure that every one of us has some personal stories connected to St. John Paul II. Some stories related to his legacy. And to me, the message of St. John Paul II is a message on holiness. His example is uh, showing us that holiness is possible to the man living in the 21st century. H holiness is our vocation. Holiness is possible for you and for me. And St. John Paul II teaches us that holiness is a necessary measure of ordinary Christian life. Holiness is achieved in daily decisions, daily choices, daily words and actions, even these little ones. We are all called to be holy. Let us strive for holiness and nothing less. Here we are with my brother Dylan and Father Carol, and let's make this drink. Go ahead, Dill. Okay, so this drink is uh, named after uh, Pope St. John Paul II. It's called the Lolek, which was his nickname as a young man um, up until or through his priesthood. Um, I'm sort of inspired by some popular Polish ingredients, including uh, honey and apricots, which I've been informed by Father Carol are popular in Poland. So let's get into it. We're going to start off with a, an ingredient that might, may, might make some people squeamish, uh, egg white. This does not have anything in terms of flavor. It's only for texture. Uh, you can leave it out if you want. Um, but I think you'll be missing out on the great foam and the silky texture it brings to the cocktail. Uh, next up, two dashes of Angostura bitters. Angostura bitters are really easy to find. Um, I usually get them at Giant, so they're like nine dollars and you can use them in a lot of classic cocktails. So Angostura bitters, two dashes. We're going to do a half an ounce of this homemade honey syrup. This is really easy to make. It's just two parts honey to one part water. Um, so you just mix it in a you know sort of microwavable glass such as this and just microwave it for a minute and then stir it. And the, the reason why I'm using a honey syrup and not honey is because honey is really thick and it's hard to uh, mix in cocktails. And actually when you chill honey, it solidifies. So you need to incorporate the water um, so it doesn't uh, solidifying your cocktail and it mixes properly. So that was a half an ounce of honey syrup. Now we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice, of course. And a half an ounce of an apricot liqueur, a good apricot liqueur, not, in, not a cheap schnapps. Um, I'll put some links, or my sister will put some links in the description. So all the recipes and some of the brands that I can recommend um, and where to find them. Um, I'm not sure if they sell this at the ABC store. I've seen other products from this brand at the ABC store, but I'll have to check and see if they sell this. And last but not least, one and a half ounces of uh, rye whiskey. I'm using Old Overholt, which is a nice, inexpensive, and great mixing rye. Now for this part, you're really going to want to put a nice tight seal on your shaker because we're doing what's called a dry shake. And that means shaking without ice. And this is to really get the egg emulsified and uh, make that nice foam uh, for the cocktail. So you really want to get a tight seal and hold it because otherwise this will explode. Um, and it doesn't matter what kind of shake you're using, this will literally pop up. And I know this from experience because it's happened to me before. So it's not, it's not dangerous, but just make sure you hold it. It 
something like five to ten seconds is enough, and then sort of just pop it. You see that the egg is turned into foam now. Now we can shake with ice. Make sure you can shake nice and hard to keep that foam. Strain it out into some cocktail glasses. And you can see you've done it right when the foam from the egg white immediately starts to separate and form a layer on the top. On our journey of faith and striving for holiness, may the Lord bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. John Paul II, pray for us.